Screen Rock fans, the Rotters, the subscribers, the viewers, the ladies who are the most gorgeous and sexy women in the world, we are coming to you to tell you that now we are launching our Patreon. And finally, we can get this awful, awful podcast to the huge audience it deserves of paying customers, not only across the UK, but across the world. Across the world, yeah, where there's one person in Ireland. Um, <laughs> There's going to be two tiers to the Patreon, ladies and gentlemen. There's going to be the cheaper tier, the Freemasons, who will be paying three ninety nine a month. That's the equivalent of a coffee for Jake and I to share. Yeah, we do share a flat white every time we start the podcast, so <laughs> you, that'll be there. You will be receiving two pieces of extra content every single month. Uh, for the month of August, that will be uh, the live episode that we recorded at Bill Murray on the 8th of August. Uh, we've got a, a video of that, stunning 4K footage. So you'll be able to watch that back in. And uh, we're going to be recording an Edinburgh Fringe special uh, where I'll be at the Edinburgh Fringe, uh, I'll be talking to Jake, uh, we'll be sharing salacious gossip about the comedy industry, Munya Chihuahua, you're in big trouble. <laughs> you're banging trouble, um, son. And then there's going to be a top tier to the Patreon, five ninety nine. Oh, oh don't, don't forget, early access for the for the three ninety nine tier sorry, as well. Sorry, sorry, forgot. Freemasons, you'll get early access um, to the podcast, you'll get the podcast two days early. Uh, the five ninety nine tier, the Illuminati, those of you who'll be buying us a beer to share once a month, you'll be getting all of that. You'll be getting two extra episodes a month. You'll be getting early access to the podcast. And a limited number of you will be getting a free rotter hat sent to you in the post, you lucky devils. Look at them, beautiful. China's hardest workers made them. <laughs> And um, you'll be getting uh, you'll be getting exclusive access to live events. So whenever we put a live show on, there's two more in the diary at the moment. You'll be getting priority access to those. And I think that's important because the tickets flew out the door for the last one. They sold out, mate. You're got, gonna you're gonna want to be early on those. Bad we've boys. got special plans. I'm not saying too much. Bobby Davro. <laughs> And finally, the most important thing, if you're one of the 599 payers, the, the Illuminati, you will receive access to the Rotters group chat. We've been teasing this for a long time. We want a group chat where the people who really enjoy it can all chat with each other about the rot they watch on the internet. Now, one thing we've been getting a lot over the last few months is people contacting us either on Twitter or Instagram or just knocking on my door and saying, please, could you cover this content creator? And we love it. We've definitely done episodes in the past where we've done that and it's been really good. Problem is we're getting so much of it now. We don't have time to look for all the messages, don't have time to get back to people and we feel like rude bastards. So we're going to create it just that the group chat can suggest topics. If you're in the group chat, we're going to have polls, we're going to have people talking, saying what should we talk about next, and people can decide that in the Rotters group chat. Members of the Illuminati will be choosing what we speak about each week, and I knew that was going to come ever since I was an anti-vaxxer. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, can't wait to see you on the Patreon side. Thank you very much for supporting us. We'll see you soon. God bless the Rotters. Welcome to the Screen Rock Podcast, the podcast where we discuss the weirdest and worst content that's been written on our screens and indeed our minds. Shout out to all the listeners, the subscribers on Spotify, Apple and YouTube. Shout out to Eugene who runs the Twitter, he might be God. And shout out to the women who listen who are some of the most gorgeous and sexy women in the world. I'm here with Jake Farrell. Was that Welcome to the Jungle? That was Welcome to the Jungle, yeah. So you might have spotted what I'm doing. Yes. Uh, after Welcome to Jamrock, the success yeah, yeah. of that in the last episode. And yeah, that went really well. Jungle, it's songs that begin with welcome. Okay, great. How do I start the podcast? Sure. Think of a song where the first word is welcome. Rather than the song, it's welcome to the Screen Rock Podcast. The next one I'm thinking... Don't tell me. I want a surprise. Well, I, I'll tell you because I'm not going to do it. But the, <laughs> okay. the one I'm thinking, and it's one of my favourite songs in the world, actually. Mm. Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Welcome to the Pleasure Dome. Right. Now... I don't know how uh, aware of that song you are. No, not really. The full length version is nine minutes long. Okay. And the so shorter than the intro then. <laughs> Most of the intro before he actually says "Welcome to the Pleasure Dome" is like animal noob noises and him going "In Sanadome the Cuba Cabra Pleasure Dome is wrecked." And I don't know if I can do that. To okay. You. So, <laughs> anyway, I'm looking forward to, to listening to that on the tube on the way home, ready for. Yeah, no, that will be great. <laughs> welcome, um, to the show. welcome to the Screen Rock Podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, how are you, mate? I'm I'm still buzzing off the live show. So we are recording a couple of days after our first ever live show, a sold out comedy club in North London, full of the worst people <laughs> you can. No, I actually have to say, can we just quickly make a comment on the Rotters? Because because it's please. 
it's your first time seeing a lot of them up close. I, I've seen a <laughs> few close. of them on my tour where yes. some of them come and watch me do stand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, you know, it's the biggest gathering of um, criminals that we, <laughs> since since a load of them got shipped to Australia. I think, yeah, so. it was it was uh, it was a bit overwhelming and bewildering to be honest. I was under the suspicion that most people were coming to see Josh Pugh and were going to be there for very disappointed. Your, your confidence in our ability to draw a crowd was so low <laughs> that 15 minutes in to a sold out live podcast episode, you asked the crowd how many people <laughs> listen to the podcast. <laughs> That is like was really... anyone looking for the toilet? Is oh anyone... my gosh, that was really one for therapy. That was the week after. Um, yeah, <laughs> just just there. Wait, who, who listens, by the way? <laughs> yeah. uh, I was. It was very. It was. It was overwhelming in a good and a bad way at times. Really? Actually, I thought the show itself, just to kind of Monday Night Football ourselves a bit. I thought we were we were at it. We were right at it. I we think. we were really good. I'm. I'm... <laughs> I'm going to hold my hands up and say, and we don't want to give too much away because um, as we, as you might have seen in the intro to this, we're launching the Patreon. Yes. You can watch the footage from the live show via Patreon. You can see all the madness that happened. And some of that madness was, uh, well, I think we can say that Oli El Barito Monster was there. That uh, that has been reported on social media. Yeah. And then I um, got us another special guest. Mm. We won't say too much about who that was. No. We will say they entered the stage wearing a horrifying cat mask. Mm. I was going to grab it because it's just there, but I think a light will fall down. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 I had a few tricks and surprises up my sleeve and I don't mind holding my hands up and saying uh, that they killed the momentum. <laughs> <slightly. laughs> but we got the show back on the road. And it, it was, it it was, was slightly <laughs> one of those where we were going so well that it was like, we can take some risks here. And then we did a few and then... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's that. It's, it's you, you know, you beat your full back two or three times. You think, I can try a Rabona and the ball goes out for a goal kick and you go, right... Back to playing it square. Hands up. That was that was on me. <laughs> That's on me. Um, but no, it was it was a really nice show. The show itself was was great. Thank you to Ollie El Brito Monster for coming down and being a small part of it. And then what we did do, and we, and we didn't really think about this too much, but we, we mm. said to everyone, we're like, we're going to go for a beer after. Yes. So no, you, yeah, yeah, you said that to everyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all slipped. In. And I'd say at least half the room came for a beer after. Yeah, and and this is what I mean about like. It's kind of I'd categorize it as a, a positive in two ways where it's like a, it's like is this going to work on stage where we like we don't really know what we're going to say we have a bit of structure I think the answer to that not to gas ourselves up too much was like yeah actually add something on stage to the point where we we might have some other live things in the diary we'll we'll talk about well we can we can we the the September 29th is on sale but that's us doing stand stand up but yeah, yeah. that'll be great we'll talk we'll about that in a moment that. but yeah um, but like yeah so. So that was really fun. And then afterwards, it was like, again, I was like, I don't know who's turning up here. I know if like four or five of my mates are coming. But then loads of people came to the pub. They were all wearing their Rotter hats, which Jacob's uh, modelling or showing there. And I'm modelling the last one because I might have lost them in a cab. (laughs) (laughs) I haven't. I haven't. They're here. Carry on. Limited availability. Um, They were just people were unbelievably kind and positive. Mm. Um quite intense about <laughs> who we should do on the podcast what we need to do on the podcast I, so, was, I was in the back you, it was it was funny because you 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 were outside the front of the pub yes and I was in the back of the pub right and a lot of the conversation I was doing in the back of the pub was what does Jake cut out tell us now <laughs> and, uh, I made and by the way that is an express benefit of the patreon there are going to be episodes that we cannot maybe even some episodes about other comedians I don't know just as a trailer. Oh, I, I, oh no! Uh, listen, the the so the two kind of patron specials releasing this month. One will be the live show itself, where you can watch that. The second one is going to be like I'm, I'm going to be at the Edinburgh Fringe next week. Tickets available, um, <laughs> and we're we're going to do a special where Jake and I talk, you know, over Zoom, but and it'll be filmed. But we'll be just bitching about comedy, really. So if you want to know what's being cut out, or you want to know what I'm here saying, don't fucking say that. Munya you Chihuahua, find- you're going to jail. You're not, not. And you're going to be named and shamed. 
Paul Merson, what a man. So, yeah, great live show. Lovely to meet everyone afterwards. And I just, a huge thank you to everyone that came and that was so yeah. nice and kind and said nice things about the podcast. As we've alluded to, this is the first time that we have received any money for doing the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have been being kept going. Well, we haven't got it yet. Well, and, yeah. And we've got some gripes with the venue, so let's, <laughs> let's see how that goes. The most, in the most screen rot fashion ever, we've got gripes with the venues. We're having to take this, the venue to the small claims court. But other than that, no, it was just people were so nice, people were so kind. I'm not going to, I'll probably have got people's names wrong. I don't want to like name specific people, but there were Australian people. There were fans of Mansfield Football Club. There were uh, people down from Sheffield. There was all sorts. Mate, and the, the, we got to meet all of the um, the spreadsheet boys. All who the spreadsheet who boys. And, and these boys, can we talk about these boys very quickly? We Please, mentioned the spreadsheet ahead. boys. There, there were other fans of the podcast who were like, where are the spreadsheet lads? I think we said, <laughs> genuinely, they were like, were they the spreadsheet lads? There was more of them. I've met two of them already. Mm. And, then, and then I met the other three. So there's five of them in total. Yeah, yeah. These boys are... Of such a kind of like like bit that, that was like the first sort of proper fan interaction we got was them going oh look we you know we've lost our minds a bit made a WhatsApp group in the spreadsheet about the podcast blah blah and and I think you and I were like wow people really care those boys have negged us horrendously <laughs> ever since that moment yeah we 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 said to we said to one of them we we're like oh you haven't updated the spreadsheet in a couple of weeks he's like yeah I've been busy so, okay. And then, you know, they, they, one of them mentioned us afterwards. He was like, "Oh, we were surprised there was anyone else here at this live event. Like, it's been sold out for weeks, but okay, thanks, mate." We said, "I mean, out, out of everyone who came to the pub afterwards, I said to him, I was like, you boys come to the pub? Nah, I've got reservations at a restaurant. Cheers, though.' So, like, all right, lads, thank you." Yeah, they've really gone the other way on us. I felt a little bit like I was back in like kind of year nine again, or like the football boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're, they're little brother in us all the yeah, way. They're, exactly, they're yeah. Jude Bellingham, and we. What are they? What are they? Called? I think what was going to end up happening is we're going to end up like funneling our money to them, like Andrew Tate style, where they're like our podcast pimps <laughs> or something. Twenty quid an hour to do the spreadsheet, boys. Yeah. And it better be paid on time. <laughs> no, but, but I yeah. think the real, not the the real hero of the show, goes without saying. Ollie El, El Burrito, Burrito Monster. Monster, unbelievable. He he was, and he was very kind afterwards. He was like, "Oh, you guys are, you know, you, you're good live." And I was like, "Mate, you're fucking good live." Yeah. I mean, at one point we passed him an avocado. He took a bite out of it. Yeah. And I, the, again, like the power he's, dynamic. He's like Robin Williams. Yeah, <laughs> the power dynamic was as such that you'll be able to watch this back on the footage. He took a big bite out of the avocado. Everyone in the audience was like, oh, and I saw it in his mouth. And he, took, he had skin as well. And I, I felt such a level of like gratitude and service to him that I held my hand out for him to spit it into my hand like he was my toddler. Oh, I wonder why the spreadsheet boys don't respect us very much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we, we, by the way, we're getting a lot of new listeners at the moment. So if anyone's listening so far, this must sound like madness. We like El Burrito Monster. We covered him very early in the show. Yes. Uh, viral sensation. He makes the most mental burritos. And at the live show, he did make a burrito live yeah and you can uh, that's, yeah and also probably got i think the biggest applause break of the night actually with a, with a gag that I when we, we, asked, we asked him how much he reckons lewis saunderson makes a year yeah then watch tune out to find out what his, what his <laughs> um but yeah overall new listeners look this is the kind of if do you want to be in this mad gang where we are being a <laughs> abused by a load of lads that make a spreadsheet and negged by them uh, we're being accosted and having hats stolen from us by everyone else. Yeah, there's an Uber driver driving around <laughs> London with about 50 hats of ours in the back of his pee. But overall, yeah. the key message is uh, it was a great evening. It was Thanks a great for evening. Thank you to everyone who came in. And, and it one. does mean, mean, mean an awful lot. There's a couple of other bits we should quickly say. First of all, we were supposed to shout this out on stage, but we got so carried away with Ollie eating the burrito that he just made yeah, that we, yeah, we didn't really speak didn't about it. it. On the 29th of September, Jake and I will be recording our best stand up from the last 10 years nearly. Mm -hmm. um, we're going through the notepads, finding our best bits, and we're filming them. And we basically want. An audience who are as screen rot as possible. Yeah, I've already sent out to my mailing list, and a few of the tickets have shifted from there. Um, but I, I really want writers in the crowd. Like after, after Thursday night, they were such a good audience. Yeah, um, and you know they, they get to see both Jake and I doing stand up for an hour each. So if cheap you fancy tickets. That, yeah, it's, yeah, it's cheap. So if you fancy that, 29th of September, the link is in our link tree on Instagram and Twitter. I'll It'll put it be in the description, the, yeah, well. description of the episode. Grab some tickets, come and see us record our best stand up on the 29th of September. Anything else we need to quickly say before we get into things? No, I think that's about it for now. We did a bit about the Patreon up top. We don't want to kind of bang you over the head with that, but any more people that can sign up, the better. We're looking forward to creating extra content, which is going to be really fun. Yeah, and a, and a quick shout out to Eugene. 
um, oh who's God. helping us out on our yeah, Twitter, well who's doing amazing work. I think he's up to like 1,100 followers in less than 10 days. Um, and a shout out to anyone who's found it from Twitter as well. Um, yeah, we, we're just very grateful for all of that. Um, this and- does feel a little bit now doing this episode back in the spare room, sweating like a Grand National horse. Like... Thursday night, we were there, 90 people, yeah. applause breaks, people eating burritos. Did, did now I'm back in this room and me and you are just got the lights on us. It's back on the training ground. It's <laughs> yeah. back on the training ground. It does not matter that you won a quarterfinal on a Saturday. Yeah. You're back in on Monday yeah, and, 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 it's, and it's time to sweat. So, and I, yeah. so on and the I've subject... hired a pickpocket to take Jacob's wallet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't explain that. It's a Mikel Arteta thing. Look it up. They'll know. They'll know. <laughs> <laughs> you know I've, I've never seen a more athletic reading audience in my face. Fucking life. Unbelievably well dressed audience, by the, the way. The amount of testosterone supplements you could sell to those freaks. The amount now. of good glasses in the room, the amount of nice baseball caps, the amount of chore coats, it was just incredible. The amount yeah. of gambling addictions, it was. And, <laughs> and, and three women. So. <laughs> Beautiful women. <laughs> okay, okay, just the get... 13 minutes of absolute bullshit. Yeah. Let's get on with the episode. Let's get into it. So th- this week we're talking about... Uh, this guy is so quintessentially screen rock. Very screen This rock. guy is, is like... In a... that I haven't got a fucking clue what he does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we've done nearly a year without this guy. It's true. He, he, he's so... He's, he's slightly more TikTok than we would usually skew towards. <laughs> um, he's collaborated with nearly everyone who's kind of big in sort of content creation at the moment, from the Bevos to the HS TikTokies. Um, and he's also, there's no sort of kind way of saying it, he's old. <laughs> this week, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about Gavinio. Get back, Shadrach. clear who's going to do the get on this because I haven't got a fucking clue about this case. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. Oi, get on this, mate. Yep. Gavinio. Gavinio. Get back, Shadrach. Gavinio is what would happen if back in 2004, when Malia, Ayanapa, Zanti and Shagaloof. <laughs> the heyday. If, though, if the people who went up and down those strips trying to get you into a club by offering you a fish bowl or a free shot, yes. if they'd been frozen in time mm-hmm. and then defrosted Thawed out in the TikTok era, that is Gavinio. That's Gavinio. Gav- Gavinio, now, it's, it's a really tough one, and I've done as much research as I can. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's a geezer called Gavin from Bradford who's done some jail time. Who Do we know that for sure? Yep. Okay. Yep, yep. <laughs> Got the news article ready. Don't you worry about that, my friend. Um, he, who, 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 I don't know. He, he, he likes drinking. He likes going out. Um, he does like going to the gym, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure what he does when he gets there. Right. Because he, 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 he I don't he's want not to like no to, he's, he's, he's not. He's not he's, gym skin. Yeah, right. He's, he's, he's not, he's not even. <laughs> who is? Yeah. Well, what a man. But yeah, he, he's, he's sort of, he's, <sighs> He's post-millennium British masculinity concentrated into one shouty man. One shouty man. He's he's Geordie Shaw. Yes. He's a bit only way as Essex. Yes. He is. What was the Welsh one? The valleys. Oh yeah, something about the valleys. Yeah. And he's he's TikTok. He mm. he he's a flashy shouty guy who likes going on nights out, who likes going on holidays abroad, and likes filming himself doing it. There is an income stream there that I do not understand, which means that he can film himself in sports cars. And what I'm going to say after that is that he's also been to jail. <laughs> Make of that what you will. Make of that what you will. And, and he's massive on TikTok. Can, and he, I, and can, I, can I try something out? I feel like TikTok specifically, yeah. it's oftentimes the people that are like big on TikTok, it's much less clear how they got big massively massively and and, and i i I think that's something about the algorithm of tiktok specifically designed to drive my my theory would be it's the audience my theory would be like it's it's the audience are crazed i just i just think it's less discerning i I, I think on instagram Mm. instagram as a platform you're kind of used to people having some kind of i I don't want to say talent Mm. but you know you can make a burrito that's also a scotch egg that's yeah, also yeah. a roast dinner that's also got you know butter chicken side yeah, and, right, and, right. And, and you know it takes you two weeks to film it yeah. and that's like an accomplishment whereas 
I, I don't think it's a coincidence that Bevo is a product of TikTok. Right. Do you know what I mean? Bevo or HS Tiki Toki. Who, got... again, if it, like, we haven't done an episode on HS Tiki Toki. Thank God. Uh, well, I, he's one where, and I should say, more people than ever, as the podcast grows, are finding the podcast and going, hey, you've done an episode about me. Mm. Some of it good. And we have to give a quick shout out, by the way, to What Willie Cooks. Yeah. Who was enjoying it. Um, who messaged us going, hey, someone's just sent me an episode you've done about me. It's really funny, lads. And then about 20 minutes later, it was like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm fuming. You've just called me the thinking man's Bevo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got to say, I, I think uh, fair play to him for, for going with that. I was a bit worried I was going to have him turn up at my house and kill me with one of his 300 pound Japanese cooking knives. <laughs> But that's, I think, the reason we wouldn't do one about HS Tiki Toki. He could actually Because he would turn up at our house and he would kill us. That is, and to be honest, uh, can I make this very clear? That's literally the last thing I need. Is Emma, <laughs> is, is, is Emma opening the door to HS Tiki Toki? Jake! <laughs> says Something H- like you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, do you know what? That's even worse. Jake, I'm leaving you for HS Tiki Toki <laughs> and he's going to fucking shank you up. Yeah. Is he a shanker or would he just be his fists? What are we talking about? How but, criminal well, okay, are we doing? But, but, okay, well, let's get back on topic to Gavinia because this is the thing with the TikTok people, mm. right? And I think this is a real, I think this is a real thing with the TikTok people mm. is you don't know what's real. Do my you know guess what I mean? would be none of it would be my. But I, I, I kind of think you're right, and we're going to get onto something where there's been a bit of drama with Gavinia a bit later, say. which turned out was real. Okay, but like. I, I was speaking to, shout out Andrew Kerr, by the way, good mate of ours who mm. listens to the pod and is kind enough to share bits and stuff. Like, th- there's like a corner of British TikTok which plays out like it's fucking Hollyoaks on drugs. You, mm. and, and Gavinio is a part of that. Mm. Like, between the HS Tiki Tokies, the Ed Matthews, yeah. and we've covered him very briefly in the past. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember him, yeah. Do you remember what he was doing? Um, was he outing pedos or something? He had uh, funded a short mission to... Um, to bait and expose a paedophile, and then they got to the paedophile's house, and then they filmed themselves cat, cat food, making the paedophile eat cat food and meow like a cat. <laughs> Did you just call that a mission? <laughs> 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 like he's in the Marines. <laughs> but but they, they and they all interact, right? Then there's HS Tiki Tuki. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a sex worker. I don't remember her name. I do remember her name because she's got the same name as a comedian who right. we're mates with, Lily Phillips. Right. They, I say a sex worker, she's like an OnlyFans girl, but they're all mates with her. Right. And then HS Tiki Toki does a thing where he makes her pretend to be in a relationship. Oh, God, yeah, I remember this. this with, with, with this bleak. long-haired mad guy. No, please stop. I'm going to have to end the episode earlier. So, <laughs> sorry, I, 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 I won't straight into it. I won't straight into it. Well, I think what you're talking about with TikTok... But, but they, they just create bollocks. Yeah. They just lie. And that's but, where like, it's different like, to they, Instagram, right? Instagram yeah. feels more like a kind of sales platform. And it's like you present this very beautiful version of your life. And it's like... if Instagram's kind of like tasteful music like i don't know instagram's like the instagram's XM. radio six instagram's radio instagram's six. six music and <laughs> tiktok is a is a, a channel on the dark web where all they play is gabba yeah and and this and gavinio is a part of that yeah like, like, and, and they make up these mad stories it's like like he's been involved in when they do boxing they do like quote unquote influencer boxing mm. and i've mentioned this before i've got a mate called joey knight Yes. who does proper misfits influencer boxing. That's the thing that like KSI is involved with. But he, he is a boxer, boxer. Well, yeah, but then a lot of the guys who do that are. Right. A lot of the guys who do that are properly trained got backgrounds boxers. in boxing, whereas Gavinio and people like that, and, he, and Bevo's doing it as well, right. they get involved in this like TikTok influencer boxing, but that is closer to WWE <laughs> because it's not real. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. And, and sometimes it is, and like... Dapper Laughs had a fight with a guy who I, I think was like not all there. Yeah. But but took it really seriously and like really beat him. I, I don't know. It, 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 it's, someone it's... someone compared to Dapper Laughs was not all there. <laughs> <laughs> Is he someone that would come around to my house and beat me up? Dapper I can't, Laughs. I can't have a pr- procession of people. Emeron, oh, no, here we go. One, mate, one for the Patreon. I've got a long email thread with Dapper Laughs from eight years ago where... Uh, <laughs> Jacob incriminating himself, <laughs> taking you, himself if you, down. If you bought proper Ian Clapper, mate, years ago, Dapper Laughs might have seen a pound note off of it. 
we'll talk about it more on Patreon. <laughs> oh, God. Now, but, do... but yeah, let, let's get into Gavinia. We yeah. sort of spoke about the world that he lives within, the kind of TikTok stuff and all that. Um, we, we've we've discussed who he is. He's, 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 just, he's a shouty man. Mm. And now we're going to watch a clip of him. And I've seen that what you've just done with your hand is pointing out I've not got my headphones. Ready? <laughs> Sorry, lads. It's, your, your, your resistance to wearing headphones is very like my resistance to wearing a tie at school. It's like inexplicable, but kind of very heartfelt. Put in number two. There you go. Um, well, so, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't like unnecessary. Cool. I don't like unnecessary accessories. As people will have seen at the live show, um, I don't. Uh, I don't own a shirt. No, or a tie. No. Do you, do you remember when um, I won my award at the Palladium? I had to ask someone to bring me socks to the event. Yeah, you didn't. I mean, you didn't have to ask to someone to bring you. You did it in order to send me loopy. You sent me, you, <laughs> you did it in order to make me spiral. So Jacob got an award. He got an aria, which he mentioned Should at the beginning. No, don't there. get it. He mentioned it at the beginning of every podcast, the first 10 episodes that we did. And by the way, he'd always remember the aria, but never remember his fucking headphones. Um, and one day he, I think, tweeted just before he was going to the Aria Award ceremony, I'm in Soho, I haven't got any socks. Can someone bring us some socks? <laughs> and did someone? That's going on the thumbnail. Um, the yeah, someone did bring us bring me some socks, careful, yes. Careful, um, careful. And I won, I won Best New Voice at the Aria, mm. beating Simon Jordan. Simon Jordan? Simon Jordan. What a recalcitrant young man you are. <laughs> How dare you? Absolute philistine, taking my award. <laughs> Undeserved completely. Um, yeah, so anyway, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah. Gavinho, Gavinho, time right. to put a name let's, to a face. Get your headphones on. <laughs> 25 minutes in, let's watch the cunt. Let's see how you feel about Gavinho and his natural habitat. Oh, yo, fuck off! Sabi! It's a Friday again, man. You know how we do skip the wheat mix. Straight on the point six. Oh my fuck God. off! <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, for some of the law! Fight Larry! Ha <laughs> ha! Oh my God. Oh my god. Oh my now, god. What I think is key to think about when watching that is the madness, the camera movement, the noise, the megaphone, and the music blaring. When he stops filming, it's just a man in a car. <laughs> <laughs> it's just silent. It's just. Right, and I'll watch that back. <laughs> ah, I should do it again. Right, everybody. On the point six. What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, it's so he's referring to the purity of the cocaine that he's taken. And his point six, what's that? Good. Point though. six is well, I mean that's that's how much of a gram. Yeah, but he's got point six. Oh, gram. point six of a gram. So is it's cocaine. Like you, so it's like you buy a gram of coke, but you often don't actually get a full gram. And in his case, oh, he's got right. point six of a gram. <laughs> he's bragging about that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's as you know, as someone who, who enjoyed that stuff for a long time. It's not bad actually, point six. <laughs> but I mean, it, it, I, I just find that so funny. And he's got he's got his hair cut kind of like Jude Bellingham, weirdly. <laughs> Just a bit weirding me out slightly. I think he's had a perm. <laughs> I th- I, I'm ninety nine percent sure he's had a perm to kind of give him almost, you know, less less almost afro hair. Okay. But then he's got the kind of tight skin fade on the side, as you say, like Jude Bellingham. Turkey teeth. I mean, I mean, yeah, the appearance. Uh, but like, and, and again, to go back to like, where did he come from? He sprung Bradford. from Bradford. <laughs> He sprung from the earth. He sprung from the earth fully thought, and it's like that. It's a bit crusty, the clown. There's a bit crusty, the clown to it. There's a little bit like Heath Ledger's Joker to it as well. If I was to give him his dues, there's a bit like I don't know. There's a bit kind of. Um, it's almost yeah. It's a bit clownish. It's like a. I mean, he's he's like kind of two Gaulier classes away from being nominated for the Edinburgh Award. <laughs> well, I, I, what he's done there, and it's something that you know, like. TV presenters have been told this for decades. Energy. Right, the right. energy. <laughs> and and I, I don't imagine the point six hurt that. <laughs> but it's... Right, guy, blah, 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 yeah, it's yeah. Friday on the point. Skip the wheat bit. Yeah, skip, mate, but he's got catchphrases. Right. This is, I mean, we, we spoke a few weeks ago about like good characters. Yeah. Who's a good character? The Schooner scorer is just a bit of a shit character. Mm. Gavinho is a good character. He's yeah. got catchphrases. He's got energy. He's got hair. He's got music. You know, and it's it, it, it's all. Thing. It's also the aesthetic of it. It's like it's perfect. It, like we mentioned this a couple of episodes ago. Up north, they go out in like tech fitness gear. Mm. That's a massive thing up north. Yeah, they, yeah. Like like that kind of Nike thing he's wearing and it's kind of like reflective almost it's like night yeah because it it's running it's, it's like made for gear, running right. it's made for running and yeah, that, yeah. that's what they wear when they go out I've, I've seen he like Bradford I mean I wanted to get into this he's from um, a part of the country 
It's almost like the M25 that surrounds Manchester. Like right. outside, like Manchester's kind of a bit of a hip, cool. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got good coffee shops. It's got a gay yeah, yeah. scene. Blah blah blah. It's got some yeah. of the worst bars on earth. Yeah, not, he's axes. not talking about the gay ones, by the way. They're good. Big no, Canal <laughs> Street. We're not, I'm talking. We're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are an affront to God. No, I, they, I'm t- <laughs> talking about like you know. It seems to become a place where it's like, do you want to have a cocktail whilst throwing an axe or oh, something? So, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's loads of that. Yeah, that, they've got. They're the place that's got that Karen's Diner. Yeah, yeah. As exactly, well, yeah. haven't they? It's that's. It's a real sign of like people who've got a bit too much disposable income that like rather than your night out or your evening out or your dinner out just being let's go and enjoy nice food. Yeah. There has to be a gimmick with it <laughs> yeah, yeah, that yeah. potentially makes you not enjoy yourself. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, they're, do, they're absolutely doing mad stuff there as well. It's like, I think there was one, I mean, there was one in Deptford where it was like a kind of old job centre and they made it look like the job centre still and stuff like that. That is, I mean, it's so middle class, isn't it? It's so like, <laughs> do you, imagine if we had to go to a job centre. <laughs> Let's go for dinner, but pretend we're poor. <laughs> Let's go to dinner and pretend that we'd go somewhere where the service staff are rude to us. Like, some <laughs> yeah, of yeah. us have to go to those <laughs> fucking places, actually, you cunts. Some of us worked in those so, places yeah, when we were so, kids. Some of us, yeah, like, like, like sort of parodying the idea that service staff are ever rude. It's, like, it's such a like privileged middle class thing. Can you imagine? Imagine if we were service Have staff. you ever been to Pizza in Stevenage? <laughs> Because Jake Farrell was there for four years being... I've got an English literature degree. Why am I bringing you a pepperoni pizza? (laughs) Jake Jake Farrell was there. Have you ever seen Ladhood? He was basically that personality. Liam Williams from BBC Three serving a pizza. Yeah, that was it. I remember once uh, I was like such an awful snob as well. And I was just like, I was trying to be nice to people, but I was like clearly thought I was above it and everything. I remember one, there there was a really nice girl I worked with and she was like 16 and um, she was obsessed with cosmetic surgery and we'd chat about it and she was like, I remember vividly almost having an aneurysm because she was like, yeah, I'm going to go to Cuba and get my tits done. And I was like, what do you mean? She was like, if you go to Cuba, because Cuba's like, they've got a surf, they've got a surplus of doctors in Cuba because the, the government, because the communist government trained them all. And she was like, I'm going to, I'm going to Cuba to get my tits done. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, wh- why do you want to do that? And she was like, well, my nan got hers done there and they're really good. <laughs> That's the most Stevenage story in the world. <laughs> the most Stevenage thing in the world. Yeah. The young lady working at Pizza Hut to save money for a degree. For, <laughs> no, to go and get her tits done like her nan. <laughs> she knew what she wanted and she was working hard towards it. But, no notes. But, but um, God, how did we get into that? I was saying that he's from, yeah. So he, so, yeah, inside, oh, yeah. Bars, in, Manchester. Inside Manchester is, is, is kind of like London 10 years ago. You know, you know, like London 10 years ago, there was like the, the, the cereal cafe. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, like, yeah. like inner Manchester's like that. But then outside of Manchester, there's like this kind of like orbital M25 thing. Places like Wigan, Bradford. I know Bradford's like further away, but like, like they're all those places in the Northwest... They're, in my mind, they're kind of like a mini Essex. It's, right. it's quite similar to the way Essex is outside of London. Mm. A lot of those places, in the sense they've got their own aesthetic. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like I say, everyone wears the running stuff, like the, the kind of bling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, do you know what he reminds me a little bit of? Do you remember Wakey Wines? No. Do you not remember that? Was that oh, yeah, I think I do vaguely. It, it was the a shot, shot. It was like the first viral shot, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and it was when that prime drink was really yes. big. And, and the guy, like... The, I just I, like so I used to go out with a girl from up there. Very I used big to go, of you. I, well, sorry. Very big of you. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> the things I could tell you about that woman. Please that, don't. That. Carry no no woman. don't say it. Carry on. Carry on with your story. Wakey wines. Oh no, he's gone into a reverie about. No, his, no, his, no, his no I, I'm actually not going to talk about. Jesus Christ, what a woman. <laughs> No, I went out with a girl from Wigan, and, and but what, there are blokes you get up there. I mean, it's 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 a mad place around that area, like yeah. like that, that kind of just outside of Manchester bubble, similar to Essex. But the, the men are very like showmanny. They're very fun. Do you know what I mean? Right, they, right, they, right. they really like they, they they have a thing up that way. Um, mad Friday just before Christmas is like the most mental night of the year, and then I think it's either Christmas Eve or Boxing Day. What do you mean Mad Friday? I think we've talked about this before. Are you sure that they all do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I said to someone from Bradford, not just like no, some... Bradford, we go anywhere up northwest. If you said Mad Friday, everyone would know what you're talking about. And then I think can't wait to get a hundred messages on Instagram saying well, that's fuck bollocks. What about Mad Friday chatting? But also, it doesn't cost two grand to get a Glastonbury. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> no, and, and then on Boxing Day, why are we day, doing this to on ourselves? On Boxing Day, everyone goes out in fancy dress. That's the thing up that part. Right. So, but it's, so people, I, I think what that kind of tells you is people don't take themselves too seriously up there. They mm-hmm. have a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. And he's like the Wakey Wines guy. He was this guy who owned a shop, and they always stock prime. And um, he go, you know, bingo, bingo, gala, bingo. Welcome to Wakey Wines. Abdul, come closer. And the guy holding the camera would come closer. Abdul, go back. And then he'd sort of speak to someone who'd driven like 300 miles to give him 30 quid for a bottle of Prime. They, the, these shop things, there's a spud guy in Tamworth. Have you heard about sp- yeah, yeah. the spudman yeah. in Tamworth? People are queuing for three hours. Like, uh, all of this is... is it, it's, it, it's because, do you know what I think it is? It's because the cost of living up there is cheaper. So they've got dispendable income and time where you can go and spend 20 quid on a jacket potato and it's a laugh on a Saturday. Or you can go and spend 30 quid on a bottle of Prime and it's a laugh on a Saturday. But I think, I think, the, t- I think the Spud Man is like, I don't think it's mega expensive for the Spuds, but I think they've just kind of gone viral on, on TikTok. And it's like, but I, I find ourselves, and maybe this is like a fatal flaw in the podcast, maybe I'm announcing the end of the podcast. Like, uh, we're trying to make sense of this. It just doesn't make sense. None of it makes sense. We're kind of sat here like a couple of old fogies going, so what's his talent? <laughs> what does he do? Is he a singer? Is he a dancer? Like with Gavinho, it's like, what is he? He's just a man in the front seat of a sports car shouting about Friday night. It, and it, and He's it, and just it, a man standing in front of a 0.6, <laughs> asking it to go up his hooter. Uh, asking the world to love him. <laughs> That's what it is. The, and, and, and to come back to what I said at the beginning, I encountered so many guys like this. So I... I uh, you know, t- this is this is a real kind of like my character. Mm. I lived in a lad's holiday for a while. Yes, right. I, 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 I did two summers in Falaraki, which yes. is which is you know really. You spoke about it very so. movingly on a recent podcast. You basically were malnourished, and your dad bought you some chips, and you cried. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But I, I did two seasons living and working in a kind of like lad's holiday resort, mm-hmm. and. Uh, like and, and, and those lads holiday resorts, I, I don't think they're really a thing anymore. I think they're more of a thing of like 10 years ago of the kind of teenies and, and mm-hmm. indeed naughties. But like Zanti, Magaluf, uh, Falaraki in my case. Um, what were the other ones? There was, Ayanapa was kind of one of those, yeah. wasn't it? They'd like, I feel like when we were growing up, like everyone would just go to one of those places. You, yeah. you, you'd like, you and your mates would walk into a Thomas Cook with 300 quid each. Mm. And it, 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 it was like you were getting, like, it was like you were in the army and you're getting deployed. Yeah, They'd yeah. just send you to one of these places <laughs> somewhere. Sunny Beach, Bulgaria. Just, just one of these towns. And they were yeah, all yeah. exactly the same, copy and paste, Bars, clubs, and you just go up and down this strip. And But what there would be, like, you'd be there for a week and you'd be like, this is the best week of my life. I'm drinking, I'm shagging, I'm dancing, I'm doing everything that I wanted to do as I've been growing up as a teenager. Mm-hmm. This is the best thing ever. And what you would meet is men in their 30s who are like these proper Peter Pan types right. who have gone... Couldn't let go. What, what, who couldn't let go? Who were like, I could just live here. <laughs> And and I did it, but I was nineteen. <laughs> yeah, and but that was would, sad then. But I would encounter these guys, yeah, and they they would like they would do a summer, and then they'd get moved around, and maybe they'd work for Thomas Cook doing the entertainment on an eighteen to thirties thing, or yeah. maybe they'd just work for a bar. But then in the winter, they'd either go back to the UK and get a job, yeah. or what a lot of them would do is a ski season. Right. So they'd go and work in you know the Alps or something, doing apres ski and all that kind. Of, yeah. But that, that's exactly what Gavino is. He's one of those guys. Those like, he's he's forty. Mm. But, yeah, like, but, I, I, he, but he hasn't grown up. He like TikTokers like Bevo make videos like that. HS Tiki Tucky makes videos like that. But they're all like twenty one. He's yeah. forty and he's like, fuck doing what forty year olds do. Mm. I I, I want to do that. Yeah, and I've got to say, as someone who's thirty two, I'd like to do that. Yeah. What does your Friday night look like? Um, I play football on a Friday night. Right. Okay. So you do have a good time. Then. I- <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. You're having yeah. a better time than Gavinia. You kind of ruined my point because you have a great time. You and Hen and Tim and all yeah, your yeah, mates, yeah, you go yeah. and play football, drink yeah. beer and have a great time. Yeah. All right, well, let me show you the other side of the fucking <laughs> coin then. I drive around the country performing stand-up comedy while, whilst... Uh, my, uh, or, By the way, or, or, the worst art form of them all. We discussed that previously. Well, let's, let's talk about what Gavinia's doing. <laughs> but, or, or I look after kids. And I, I'm at an age, and I'm sure a lot of people can relate to this, where Friday night you've got responsibilities or you're finishing work later, you've got things to do, right. you've got family to look after. Gavinio has gone, fuck that. I'm going to be in a sports car with a 0.6 mm. and then I'm going to go out. He, he also, I should say, the, the guy doesn't stop holidaying. Like, like, like he's been on 12 lads holidays this summer. 
and and listener, it's the first weekend of August. <laughs> Like he he like and and he collabs with everyone. Right. He, he he's done nights out with HS Tiki Toki. He's been out with Bevo, Ed Matthews. He's been out with Bevo. He's been out with Dan Bennett. Oh my god. Dan Bennett put up a, a picture of him stood up stood next to Gavinho in Ocean Beach, and he's like, "I've just met Gavinho. He's twenty two years old. He's the life and soul of the party. We cracked the UAV. We found zero point six, and then we had to go on a few eights. I had the tens, and then we went home. You've got to meet this guy. Shout out Gavinho. Do you reckon that's a paid thing? Do you reckon Gavinho having to fork over like five hundred? Well, notes? We, we we spoke before about meals by Cooge and how you know it's kind of like an organised PR opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Where you know PR firms in America and London will correspond to make sure that Gordon Ramsay and him meet up, right. film it all, and it goes viral. And you know meals by Cooge gets a few hundred thousand more followers mm. and. Gordon Ramsay sells some more shit burgers, right? Yeah. I, I, I think with these guys, there's a disgusting WhatsApp group where I feel like HS Tiki Toki is king and these are his little delinquents. And he kind of says on there, he's like, right, Gavinia, you're at Ocean Beach. Dan Bennett will be there. I want you meeting up and taking pictures. If you don't do that, you get a fucking slap. And they go, right, oh. And then we'll meet up and take pictures. I, 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 I feel like, like Tiki Toki is king mm. and he orestrates He's the, man. the nasty... Like and and I feel like you know that the WWE Phillips, he's the, the commissioner of, of the WWE yeah yeah and the OnlyFans woman is kind of his queen and it, but, but and and you know but and then the rest of them have to he's do Vince he McMahon says. HS Tiki Toggy is Vince McMahon <laughs> yes who's Gavinio is Gavinio the Undertaker Gavin, Gavin, no he's not the Undertaker the, this, this is the other thing with the Gavinio with fucking the Gav- hell your response to that so genuine so earnest he's not the Undertaker no I can't believe you'd say that and and I encountered this when I was. Third use of the term encountered. When I, when I was abroad. So I was 19, mm-hmm. right? So I occupied a kind of funny place in the hierarchy where I was nowhere near the lion, the king of the jungle, right? Which is the HS Tiki Toki. In, so, so I'm, in I'm comparing the kind of Lord of the Flies society that I encountered <laughs> on a lad's holiday that I lived on yeah. with the Lord of the Flies society <gasps> that I think all these British TikTokers Yeah, okay, right, 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 right. Now... The lion is the biggest one. It's simple as that. Sure. And that's and when I say the biggest, I mean the henches, the right. hardest. Okay. And that's HS Tiki Toki. He, he's sure. like a good fighter. Okay. He he had a clash with um, <clears throat> another uh, American TikToker and he won. Right. So he's unquestionably king of the jungle. Mm. Right. Now, when I was abroad, he's Premier League. When I, when I was abroad, it was a similar thing. Mm-hmm. There were twenty five year olds. So peak physical condition. Yeah. The henchest, the most good looking. They'd, they'd get the most girls yep. and they were king of the jungle. They'd work at the best bars, they'd earn more money than anyone else right. and what they say would go. Now, Gavinho, in the same way that I was younger, so I couldn't be near the top of the food chain, but mm. I also wasn't really vulnerable because I was young enough that I wasn't a threat to the lion. <laughs> Gavinho is 40 years old. <laughs> so, and, and, and what you can see with Gavinho, I don't want to slag the guy off, he's desperate. Right. He's desperate. He's missed. He's missed his window. As he, he, age and, wise, and he's doing anything to hold on. Right. He'll fly anywhere. And it, it, like I, I reckon if we text Gavinia now and yeah. we're like, "Do you want to go to Bulgaria, to Sunny Beach next mm. week? We'll film some content." He'd pick us up. But there's a so so right so so so, so, so what I'm saying is, he don't think that this guy is top of the food chain. No. He's a very desperate hanger oner, and and he and and I think you can. And we're going to watch a little bit of controversy with Gavinia in a moment. But I think you can see within that. That he, like... There's a vulnerability. There's a vulnerability. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, we don't have the wisdom bell, but I would give you a ding. Okay, nice. Yeah, but... but... And this is, I suppose, the cost, right? Because it's like, in a way, the TikTok lifestyle, the, the dream that it's selling is, don't have to get up at five in the morning going to yep. work on the buildings. Don't have to worry about the bills. Bit of glamour, I suppose. Maybe, I don't know, drugs, women. I don't know what it is, the, the, the lifestyle. I suppose, it, like with anything, it's... Being a bit famous, people knowing your name, yep. people saying, "Oh, you're cool," getting or whatever, recognized getting and recognized. wanting to hang out with you. But for Gavinho, forty-year-old man from Bradford, we think, yeah, there is a cost. And is th- this video we're going to watch now is that cost right? Well, the, this video we're going to watch right now, it it's the cost in the sense that he's a scalp that His people kind there. of want to take. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess what I would say with this, we spoke about Bevo in the past, and we were like. Oh, there's a kind of desperate... He wants to be part of the gang. He wants to be cool. And he's vulnerable right. as a result of that. And and that's the case with Gavinia. And and in the same way that people kind of want to mug Bevo off. Mm-hmm. And he gets mugged off. Yeah. 
that's what's happened here. So, and, and I think the key with this is like the real kings of TikTok, the Ed Matthews who turns up at a paedophile's house and makes him eat cat food or the H. HM- that's the king, by the way, the guy that does that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or HS Tiki Toki. King is a, a relative term here, I suppose. HS Tiki Toki, who, you know, is the hardest one. He beats people up, who faked a car crash, who, who can orchestrate a fake relationship between an OnlyFans woman and a man who has learning difficulties. Right. Again, that's the king. <laughs> yeah. Gavinio isn't there. Okay. And, and so we're going to watch something that happened to Gavinio mm. that really confounds his status as being... In Not quite world. king of the yeah, jungle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so so here's the first one. And this was uploaded. Now, we mentioned earlier, Gavinio has some um, has some catchphrases. Yes. On the 0.6. What yeah. was the other one he said? Get Back Shadrach. So it? Get Back Shadrach is the main one. He right. likes saying that. He, he's released songs called Get Back. Get Back Shadrach. Don't know where it comes from. I'm 99% sure I've heard Tyson Fury say it before. Okay. Um, this, this video is titled Get Slapped Shadrach. I wonder if you can see where it's going. Oh, the TikTok superstar. So can we just Yo, pause for a moment? Yeah, sure. okay. So I'm just going to read, um, for people who are listening at home, I'm going to read the caption. When them TikTokers get carried away and give cowie talk to a 13-year-old boy and you have to slap them. He regressed into his childhood. His bottom lip came out. He had to wiggle wind out of his lug. Don't know what that means. It's all inside your mind. Wadoosh, which I think is one of his catchphrases that they're kind of using against him. And what we're watching now... We're watching someone who has, by the looks of things... Uh, accosted accosted Gavinho Gavinho. in a car park and is kind of chasing him with the camera. And it's as fun as it sounds. (laughs) (laughs) Why are you fucking going? He slapped him there. You're lucky. Leave him. Leave him. That's his mercy on you, isn't it? I couldn't give a fuck. Everybody knows this TikTok superstar. Yeah, what did you say to my son? Tell him what you said to me, son. So, so, so the man behind the camera is repeatedly saying, "What did you say to my son?" And he's kind of roughing Gavinho up. And Gavinho, he doesn't look like King of the Jungle there, does he? No, he doesn't. He's not. He's and not... I think, by the way, the implication is not that he said anything inappropriate. Sexually. Well, okay. So, so, so I'll get into that in a moment. But what you can hear just about is. Um, <laughs> The, the sun is there. Right. And the sun is 13. Come on, lad. We're going out. And, and, where are we going? <laughs> we're going to go and beat up a TikToker. And the sun is going, leave him. And there's a really funny bit where the dad is going, look at that. He's showing you mercy. <laughs> now, so that video goes viral without much context to it, apart from he said something to my 13-year-old son and he's regressing to his childhood state. And I have to, I really saw that, I have to say. Any chance it's fake? It's not fake. We don't and think we're going to see why it's fake in a moment. Right. Why it's not fake in a moment, right, sorry. Right. Now, that went round and there was an awful lot of um, speculation. Mm-hmm. Some of it is that speculation was that Gavinio um, was providing the man's son with drugs. Right. I should say there is a news report you can find. Gavinio has been arrested in the past. Um, it was for not having a license for a car, driving an uninsured vehicle. Right. Um, and then he had to do some kind of like... Uh, rehab thing which he didn't do he had to turn up for like community service unpaid work he didn't right. do so they arrested him again no no history of him being arrested for drug charges the other speculation <laughs> was that he was a nonce right, right. <laughs> he's dicks off I think probably most likely is that he's just been like fuck off well something. well, we find out in a moment okay. but, but, but neither of those things are true but again it's kind of like you live by the sword you die by the sword mm. if you want to run around and talk about 0.6 and be a, a 39 or a TikTok star yeah people will speculate you're either a drug dealer or a nonce yeah. so now <laughs> that video goes viral and like the demeanor of Gavinho in that video, again, people not. It's so saying, strange to be comparing the guy who's in the car, like, Gadoosh, yeah. get up, my Shadrach. <laughs> <Not six. laughs> and then he's like, Yeah, back, Shadrach. <laughs> and they're, and they're but it, it, you know, we're watching a 40 year old guy, but it, it's, it is like watching a little boy. Yeah. He's trying to hide in the hood of his coat. He's going, Leave me alone, please. And it, it, there, there's a really sad bit where I cannot he's wait, of, by the way, for Gavinho to turn up at my house and do exactly the same thing. <laughs> <me. laughs> But he takes like two steps back. He clearly wants to walk away. He can't walk away, and he keeps walking. And it's it's sort of sad to watch. Now this that went viral. Mm-hmm. This is Gavinio's response to that video going viral. Let's see how he responds to people going. What have you been up to, Gavinio? Are you a paedophile? Are you selling drugs to a boy? Why did a dad beat you up? That video that's going about about me yeah, was six months ago, bro. Five months ago, summer. Ages ago. Why did you post it then? Oh, I know why. Because one in the public eye. And now he's put up trying to get a few likes and a bit of clout out of it. You know what I mean? He's upset because he gave his baby mum the D. You know what I mean? He's claiming it's because he gave gave the guy's baby mum the D. I am mad! 
I gave your baby mum the D, now you want to try violate me? Come on, brother. Come on, come on. Come on. Let me explain to you something. Hate as well, hate. But I'm going to keep on shining. You know, shining and grinding, mate. Get back to your 9 to 5. I'll start to sit back and do my... Get yeah, back, shot rag. Fuck off. Come on. I'm gonna need a translator for that. God knows why that was. So, so <laughs> referred to the nine to five in that though, with disdain. No, no, yeah. Well, he's saying it. The guy exactly. He's yeah. saying like, I'm, 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 I'm a TikTok superstar. I'm shining. I'm, the I'm life. gonna keep shining. And he sort of does the money symbol with his hands. I'm gonna keep living my life, having a good time, being, you know, Gavinio, and you know, you're trying to get a bit of clout off me. That was filmed months ago. Why has it gone viral now? Blah blah blah. You can't touch me. And and the thing he keeps repeating is, it's because I gave the guys baby mum. Mm. Which is a choice of phrase. It's like, why is a 40-year-old man from Bradford using the phrase baby mum? because I gave her the D. Mm. I, now, he put that out. Mm -hmm. And I think what happened was the dad saw that. Mm -hmm. And the dad was like, okay, you're claiming that you slept with my partner. I'll find you again. <laughs> And I, th I, I suspect what happened was some messages went back and forth in the background. And what came next is this, which is a kind of, um, it, I mean, to me, it falls somewhere between a kind of like, you know, when you see like travellers send each other like threats. Call out videos. Call out videos. Or like, or like And then they often have a fight. Right. And then they'll do a video saying they've made up. Like enough respect. Kind That's of thing. what this feels like. So let, let's just work. So this is the kind of con conclusion. This is the third, the third of the trilogy. The conclusion. I can't believe I make you watch this on a Sunday morning. This the conclusion of the Gavinio the saga. Let, let's see how the it ended. The conclusion of the Gavinio saga. Here we go. This is a guy that slapped me, yeah? This is the guy that slapped, slapped me because I said something inappropriate to his kid at an house one night when I had a few drinks and I shouldn't have said it. His dad rang me and said, listen, come apologise to my son. So I went and met his dad. His dad did what any dad had to do, slapped me about a bit, yeah? This and that. The video is from four months ago. He sent it to his mate. His mate's fucking put it up and down. They sent over. I never asked a kid to buy anything off me, if you know what I mean. And I never offered to meet him at park. I'm not a wrong on what you lot are making out. The guy did what he had to do and the kid's a good kid and we're all here now shaking hands and to get the thing in the past because he's blown way out of proportion. Do you know what I mean? It's ended that one. My hands there. I don't want nobody to do all in my name to this man. The man's apologised for what he's done and it was dealt with on that day. The video shouldn't have been out. It shouldn't have got out and it's put to bed. Thank you. And that's how. And then listen, I apologise to the kid as well. Man. The you know son! What I mean? <laughs> so all you people that are doubting me saying this and that, mate, yeah? Now you know the truth, don't you? So I spread this like you spread the lies. End of that one. Oh my God, it's like the fucking lamest mafia of all time. <laughs> I don't want anyone to do out to this man in my name. It's, it's but this is but these, the these are real people, right? Filmed in the northwest 100%. of England. <laughs> these are not seventeen-year-old boys. This is what these these are real men. Imagine going into work and going, "What did you do yesterday?" I actually had to go I to the drove car to a park. Retail park. I went to the retail park. What did you go to the retail park for? I had to film an apology video with a TikToker who I've been feuding with in a kind of hyper local feud for the last six months. <laughs> But this is it. This is like the, the, this is this Daniel. Is... What did you do at the weekend? Well, my dad drove me to retail park uh, because he slapped Gavinio a few weeks ago, and Gavinio has been getting called a nonce on the yeah. internet. So Gavinio gave my dad three hundred pound cash to yeah. make a video where we all shook hands. It was very important that we did it because otherwise Gavinio was going to be labelled as a nonce. But can I just say that this is a, like Greek tragedy. <laughs> it is, it is yeah, like it's, this is like when you flew too close exactly to the sun. when yeah. you allow a bit of chaos into your life if you open the door to this it's a faustian bargain you're making with the internet and you're going from that guy it looks like a, tr a tradesman with a son and yep. he, everyone it's infecting everyone it's seeping under the doors it's getting in through the windows we're all going to be doing it we're well, going to be in one of those videos soon Gavinio is going to watch this and me and you are going to be in a retail park with him going look no, 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 slap no. me about a bit. <laughs> no, we're, we're gonna have the we're gonna have the London equivalent. We're gonna have the Zone Two equivalent of that, which is you and I stood outside, <laughs> stood outside of like, um, stood outside of the Plimsoll in Finsbury Park <laughs> with what, what Willie Cooks. <laughs> Guys, what will he cooks here? I've just eaten some sprunions on a beef burger. Um, just here with the Screen Rock guys and the Schooner Scorer to say, we're all pals, we're all going for a couple of margaritas after this. By the way, Schooner Scorer, what did you think of the lager we just had in there? Schooner Scorer, here's his session, Schooner Scorer. And us going, bash. 
<laughs> but you're right, you're right. It is, and it's and it's the thing with Gavino. It's like, well, live by the sword, die by the sword. If you, if you if you're gonna be a forty year old guy who drives around shouting about zero point six mm. and doing that, which I hope to be one day. I mean, day. somehow he was drunk at a party with thirteen year olds. <laughs> Oh yeah, he said. I said something to her. I just assumed. I this. was drunk at a party. I said something to the lad. I shouldn't. But have does said, he mean? He's thirteen. Does he mean? Does he mean? Hopefully, he means that he received a message whilst he was at a party. Hopefully, oh, if knows. he's at the party with the kid, then we should actually look but into but, that. But then more. it's maybe worse. Like, <laughs> yeah. is, it, is that any better? No, if you're not. at a party with a forty-year-old oh, bloke, what are you up to, mate? I'm messaging thirteen-year-olds. Stick it up for Gavino. <laughs> I remember, I'm going to tell a quick story from my fellow Aki days. Now, I've got some horrendous story from Well aware of it, yeah. I've, I've, I've bleeped say, out a lot of them. This isn't too bad. Basically, I was, I, and, and this is an equivalent of what's happened to Gavino. I was um, out with a guy, and it was a guy that I knew quite well, a guy called Luke from Leicester. Typical, one of these fellow Aki guys, he'd been doing it for 10 years or so, just Peter Panning around Europe, right. didn't want to grow up. He had a Slovakian missus. I mean, this is basically what happened to me. I, when I was in Falaraki, I was in a band. We, we were like a covers band that played in a bar five nights a week. The other two nights, there was a, a hypnotist. And when I say a hypnotist, he, he was a guy who would smoke three cigarettes in a row before mm. going on stage and, quote-unquote, hypnotise girls into making their orgasm noise on stage. Mm. On stage. On the, I was just working out stage. my act at the time. I, didn't, I was new to the whole thing. <laughs> I, I remember once I was with this guy Luke who had a Slovakian missus. There's loads of Slovakians in Falaraki. Um, and his, his, <laughs> he, he, he was really gutted. I, I met him in his bar and he was really gutted. I was like, what's the matter, Luke? He's like, she fucking cheated on me. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, she, she's been cheating on me with the, with the hypnotist, with, with Simon, the hypnotist. Mm. I was like, oh, mate, I'm so sorry. He goes, she claimed she was hypnotised, but I don't think she was. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't think she was. And he was like, I don't think he really hypnotises people, does she? And I was like, I don't think he is hypnotizing people, no. And he looked at me and he went, this is what happens when you stay in Falaraki too long. And, and you want to say to Gavinho, this is what happens when you stay in TikTok That's a beautiful long. poetry. I wish we had the wisdom bell. Yeah. All of this, our culture, our society, TikTok, this is what happens when you stay in Falaraki too long. You're only meant to go for a week. You just got to... Touch it and feel it. Taste the chaos and then come back. And then grow up. And you can't Go live home there and forever. Grow up. And, and if you don't, your your Slovakian partner will leave you for a hypnotist or you will end up filming yourself outside a DFS in a retail park in Wigan explaining why a man hit you because you were texting his 13-year-old son whilst you were at a party. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Screen Rock Podcast. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Uh, I will see you next time. See you next week. Take care, Ross. Mm-hmm.